personal development, sometimes it can sound like really wishy-washy, it can sound like a cultish thing, but I think personal development or self-development, call it what you want, is foundational to us in terms of our interactions with our patients, our interactions with our significant others, children, family members. And I think it will ultimately make you a better communicator, which is why you should listen to this episode in its entirety. And your mission in this episode, this interference cast, is to apply just one thing, whether it's a book title that we recommend or whether it's one tip that we give you to better yourself or better your interactions, I want you to become the master of implementation because knowledge is nothing without implementation. Hello, Patrice Rati, I'm Jazz Glati, and welcome to this interference cast. This one is suitable for CPD or CE via the app on iOS and Android because there's lots that can be learned that we can apply to better interactions with our team and become better communicators. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. It's great to have you from wherever you are in the world. This is a non-clinical episode, hence why it's an interference cast. The clinical episodes are PDPs, protrusive dental podcast episodes, and they are a little bit meatier, a bit more clinical, but we must not forget that the true essence of being a dentist is communication because you could be the best dentist in the world. You can have the nicest preps. You can have the best retraction cord, hemostatic control. But patients don't care about that. They care about the interactions. They care about how you make them feel. And this is one of those episodes which will make you feel better and make you a better human being and give you a dose of inspiration. Patrice Rati, I just want to take a moment to wish you and your family a very happy new year 2023. Whilst I think that the new year is a a sign of new beginnings, and it's classically a time where we think of, you know, New Year's resolutions and all those kind of things, but a a goal can be set at any point. But for me, I'm also quite cliche in the sense that I do like to reflect in the Christmas period and come up with new goals and ideas for the new year. So I'm going to share a a few of mine with you in the hope that some of you will reciprocate and and message on Instagram at Producer Dental what your professional goal is. But I'll tell you one of my personal goals and one of my professional goals, uh, my personal goal is to continue to savor my role as a father. My wife is now expecting number two, so we're super excited. That's coming in May, but also develop as a parent. So very much in the theme of this episode, I want to really develop as a parent. I just want to share with you a really awesome book that I discovered. It's called How to Talk So Little Kids Will Listen. It's an audio book I'm listening to. So once again, that's How to Talk So Little Kids Will Listen. It's a survival guide to life with children ages two till seven. So for me, it is absolutely hitting the spot. Like the book before this I read was The Yes Brain Child. It was good, but it didn't really hit the spot compared to what I'm listening to now, which is just so much more practical. What I love about this book is that instead of just telling me or suggesting to me some ideas of how to become a better father and how to have better, more meaningful interactions with my children, it gives me clear, concrete examples and scenarios, which I just thought was absolutely brilliant. Scenario after scenario after scenario from various parents, various children, and how the different tools and skills presented in the book can be applied. So for me, that was really, really useful and something that we're doing as part of our occlusion course as well. So what a professional goal I have is to make the best occlusion resource ever like ever. And so one thing we're applying to that, which is also in this book about parenting, is scenario-based education. What happens if your crown is too proud? What happens if you have an open contact? What happens when you have some frematis and you're planning to lengthen that tooth, for example? Just various different occlusal scenarios and how we can apply occlusion to get better outcomes. I found that to be a very powerful way to learn. I think it's a powerful way to teach occlusion as well. So that's my personal goal, i.e. parenthood and professional goal wrapped up. But I'd love to hear from you, Patrice Rati. What are your professional goals? Don't worry, you don't have to make your personal goals public unless you want to. But tell me your professional goal. Anyone who shares either as an Instagram post or on their story, their professional goal for the year and tags at Protrusive Dental on Instagram, I'll send you a free hoodie, the famous blue Protrusive Rati hoodie. I'll send it to you wherever you are, whether you're in Uganda or Uruguay or Australia or New Zealand. Recently, last week, I sent one out to Alex. I won't embarrass you and say your surname. But thank you, Alex, for being a Kiwi Petrucerati. I would love to send some more of these hoodies out to all the Petrucerati who engage with this. So share a post or a story, tag at Protrusive Dental, share your professional goal with us, and let me and my team send you a hoodie to wherever you are. And that book title, by the way, if you're a parent and who's interested in this kind of stuff, I'll put it in the show notes for you. Let's join my guest, Aggie Kalamides, who is a dentist who fell in love with self-development and personal mastery. And so he's gonna share his story and give us some real tangible tips. I'll catch you in the outro. 
Agi Kalamidas, welcome to the Protrusi Dan podcast, my friend. How are you? I'm great, uh, Just Thank you for the invitation. I'm uh, delighted to be here and looking forward to the conversation. I love speaking with podcasters, man. I, 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 I love my clinical guests and stuff, but it's great to have someone who's also a podcaster because I know the audio quality. My producer is not going to kill me for any bad audio. Uh, you look good. You sound good. For those who are watching the video, you can see everything's nice and crisp. So there are a few benefits uh, uh, to be enjoyed there. So to let's just kick off, my friend. You are sure. your space, your niche that you've gone into is personal development, something I'm, I'm a huge mm -hmm. fan of, something that I've mm -hmm. been addicted to mm -hmm. since I was maybe age 15, 16. But I'd love to hear your story for all those dentists around the world listening right now. Yeah. How did you get into that space? But even before then, let's tell us about your professional journey and how much of that is still happening. Okay, sure. Yes, I am a dentist by profession. I will tell you a bit of my story, which are relevant to where I have arrived here. So the first one was when I was 17, about to make the, you know, the decision about my professional future. And I didn't have any desire at all to go to dentistry. However, because my mom was a dentist, I was, let's say, influenced uh, to go into dentistry. So that's the, the first bit. Then I worked in Greece, which is my home country, for about 10 years. And then in uh, 2010, I made a decision to move to the UK. So that was the, the second uh, important point because I changed completely everything in my working dental life, the way we do that. And did you start Greece. working in an NHS practice? Is that yeah. how you started to, to work? And what, how is that different to being a dentist in Greece? It's just because those who are listening, we like to know what dentistry is like in other countries. Are there similarities? Do you feel like there's a treadmill effect happening in, in Greece or was it a different uh, type of beast? In the beginning, I was shocked to because I was used to see like seven, eight patients a day in Greece on, on the busy days. So when I went to 30 and 35, it was overwhelming. And I remember I was joking afterwards that in six months working in the UK, when I started, I did more extractions than I did six years <laughs> in Greece. So mm. I could, mm -hmm. it was a different kind of work. But uh, yeah, it was a necessary step in the journey because I learned so much, you know, when you mm -hmm work uh, and you have to work fast and think fast and you know prep even faster so yeah i think for young dentists who are starting out i think there's so much to be learned about volume dentistry there is, you know don't dismiss it as like no we don't associate with that we have to do slow perfect dentistry from the start there is something that you can learn in terms of quickly diagnosing getting a, a concise history from a patient being able to get people out of pain efficiently so i think you know let's not uh, trash that experience i think there is something to be learned i think that is part of your sort of picture painted of the kind of clinician you became Absolutely. Absolutely. It's so important what you just said about being able to, to judge quickly because sometimes and many times it's great to take time, but sometimes you don't, don't have the time for X or Y reasons. So it's fantastic to be able to utilize those skills and apply them even when you would like to, to take time. So yeah, it was a great learning curve. And then I will bring it a little bit forward to answer your original question. In 2015, I finished a master's degree. I did it in the University of Manchester, restorative and aesthetic dentistry. Stephen Davies, was he teaching part of that? Yes, the CMD? yes, yeah, yeah. Legend, yes, the legend. occlusion okay. guy. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> I always remember him. So I found myself in a very strange uh, position when I graduated and uh, instead of being super motivated, pumped, I was expecting, you know, I just finished a master's degree, a master's degree, I can do some complex restorative cases, which I always wanted to. And instead I found myself confused. I'm not sure what, whether I would like to be doing all that or not. And that happened when I started, uh, when I was in my early 40s. So it kind of coincided with uh, what many people term as uh, midlife awakening, or uh, <laughs> I would prefer that word than the other one. So <laughs> I started thinking that there is something wrong there. I mean, I would expect to be super uh, happy and uh, pumped up. I wasn't. So that led me to start uh, a journey, an inner journey of uh, personal development, self-exploration to find out what on earth is, is going on? Why am I not uh, fulfilled in my life? Why? So that was in 2016, around that time. And since that time, personal development became such a, a passion for me. I realized that it is so much of my personal goal as, as a human being to keep mm -hmm. on growing and developing because everything else is 
secondary is as a result of developing as a person. So that I w- <laughs> that's a, a long-winded answer to your question about the personal development. No, it's nice <laughs> to go through the, the journey there. Now, that, that feeling, those emotions you described after finishing a master's, yeah. And feeling a little bit, maybe lost is, is maybe, a, I don't know if it's the right word or not. It's a word that a certain dentists do use to me. is that they're feeling lost in their career at certain points. And it can happen at any point, including after doing that. I always liken it to gold medal winners in the Olympics. They, 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 they train, they train, they train, they win the gold medal. And then afterwards, they, they, you know, they have that one night of celebration. But afterwards, they, they describe this like wait, what now? Like, you know, they, they, they have this empty feeling inside. And so I always liken it to, to that kind of feeling. At any stage in our career, we could have this. So you, your answer in terms of where you wanted to, the remedy for you at the time was self-discovery and finding out about getting immersed into self-development. What did that look like for you in terms of getting started into self-development and personal development? I went to lots of seminars, I read lots of books, I was uh, truly fascinated by a new world opening up before my eyes, that's how I looked at it then, and then I had a a pivotal or a light bulb moment, as I like to call it, in 2017 I went to a Tony Robbins event in London, so... I suppose most people would be familiar with who that person is. He's quite a household name by now in terms of personal development. Anyway, in that event, I had a... I mean, for those who don't, for those who don't, because when I discovered him, yes. I, I was like a, a one year out of dental school. And for those who don't know, it's a, it's a giant man with giant hands who will get you pumped. Yes. He'll just he's, a, he's Mr. Motivator. <laughs> he will get you to ask questions to yourself, which you've never even thought to ask, that yeah. are just empowering. And yeah, empowering is a great word. He's someone... Uh, with giant hands who can empower you. Absolutely, yes. He is like, <laughs> uh, probably the most uh, well-known figure in personal development world uh, nowadays. And he is huge indeed. He's yes, <laughs> in every way. And his dimensions <laughs> are, are as well. Anyway, it, uh, that event in London, it was 10,000 uh, participants. It was a big event in Excel. And I, I had a big realization about all my behavior and how I have been until that time in my life. You see, I was a very reserved person, very shy when I was in uh, around people that I didn't know. I was very, you know, close to myself, not, you know, the person that was comfortable being around people or speaking their opinion out. And on that day, on that event, I realized that there were some limiting beliefs that were playing at the back of my head like a, like a tape. It was always at the back of my head telling me that, Aggie, people are not interested in what you have to say. So I don't know how it was there, but it was the first time that I really, that became very clear to me. And I thought, oh my God, I don't want to live the rest of my life like, uh, like this and not like speak to people. Yes, completely. So that really was the, the trigger point or the catalyst to, to lead to an acceleration of my journey. Then I started doing public speaking, which before was probably my worst uh, fear or my nightmare. So I joined a five-day bootcamp course, which was a big step. And then I started doing podcasting in 2018 about personal development. And that's how it uh, it started, uh, the journey of uh, over there. During that time, I was also doing a little bit less dentistry. So from full time, I went down to to part time. Well, for many reasons, but one of them was I was so passionate about learning these things. So I realized that there was something for me to follow. And I'll take a little break here. Yeah, you found you found an, uh, another uh, wind under your sails, or you found another mission, a purpose mm-hmm. to to pursue, and that's a beautiful thing, my friend. Are you still practicing dentistry, Aggie? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm still practicing dentistry. Yes, amazing. And so, what are some lessons, some tangible lessons that you can share with the Patrice Rati in the sense that your journey of self development mm-hmm. and self empowerment and betterment? There are other dentists who may have felt like you did. Or there are some little skills that you can share, little top hacks that you can share that will help the busy, stressed dentist to either have more better interactions, more meaningful interactions, or live a more fulfilling and happier life. Mm. So I give you this very tough task to answer this very difficult question. <laughs> the question is difficult because, you know, the, the thing with a little tip someone can do, that's very easy to give. I can give many. The thing is that finding that with these little tips, you can have very little effect. Whereas uh, 
when you go deeper on something and really absorb in understanding, then you can make a big difference. So I'm, I'm, that is the difficulty of the question, but I will, uh, I will do my best. For me, one of the most important, if not the most important thing that I gained from uh, personal development and applied to dentistry is my communication skills. I was rubbish communicator before and that was to a large extent also because of the way that I was thinking about myself that you know the patient won't want to hear me saying this or that so communication also is a two-way thing so it's not about what you will speak to the patient only which has vastly increased because I (laughs) You know, this is a big topic on its own, but communication is also listening, understanding the other person's needs, understanding their, you know, personality type or whether they are visual or kinesthetic, all these things are, you know, you build better rapport with the other person. And in the difficult many times relationship we have with uh, our patients, some of them anyway, especially when things are not going maybe as I would like them to be. Communication is what will make the biggest difference whether, uh, let's say, something, an untoward event escalates and creates a real mess in, you know, your personal and professional life or it yet resolves in a very amicable way because you understand what the other person needs they understand what you're trying to do and then, you know, it, it works out. So communication, I can't emphasize that enough, yeah, how yeah. important it is. And we're not trained to communicate as dentists. We're not. And, and one thing you just shared, I don't know if you realize you've done this, Aggie, but you've just shared the very first habit of the seven habits of highly effective people. So one of the, the, the great books that started my journey around about age 15, 16 was that one, like, like many people's mm-hmm. journeys, either mm-hmm. Tony Robbins or that book by Stephen Covey. And what you shared there was, you know, uh, first seek to uh, understand and then to be understood. And that was mm-hmm. one of the lessons I always uh, kept in my mind. And, and it's so true. And with communication, it's a really powerful thing because when I did my, uh, I did some training with Toastmasters, public speaking training, yeah, uh, and they did it in Richmond. Lovely group of guy, guys and girls, and uh, you know, my heart would race that I'd come up and whatnot. But I knew I wanted to become a better communicator, a better speaker, uh, and that happened over time. But the journey it took me on was beautiful. It put you know, put, putting yourself in those uncomfortable scenarios, mm. it's so good for the soul. I think it's so so good for the soul. And an amazing thing happened when I I, I won this um, cup, I won this trophy of, of public speaking at, at the Riverside Communicators. The fascinating thing was at the end, this gentleman comes to me. And my speech was about how I named my son, the, the, the processes I went through about naming my son. It had some humor in it, it had some good you know, facts about Sikhism and stuff in it. But he came to me at the end, and I didn't discuss dentistry at all. But he came to me, he said, can I have your card? Because I want you and only you to be my dentist. But he didn't know anything about my, what my preps looked like. He doesn't know about my composite, uh, what my composites looked like. He didn't know how well I removed caries. He didn't know anything about my clinical dentistry. He just saw me. He liked what I had to say, the way I said it, nothing about dentistry, and he decided that I'm the dentist for him. Now, that for me was when the penny dropped. Like We all know how important communication is, but that's when it really, really came uh, shining to to, to me. I will add uh, another book to what you said. That was the first first thing that came to my mind. Uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dale Carnegie, which is like a hundred years old book or something like that. It's... That book, when I read it uh, like seven years, six, seven years ago, I thought, oh my God, why did I not read this book when I was uh, 18 years old? It should be mandatory. Even younger, reading. I'd say. I think 13, 14 year olds should yeah. all read this. Yeah, so that's, uh, it really changed the way that uh, I, I perceive these uh, things and communication and connecting. And you said also about how well... The patient didn't know, uh, or that person didn't know that how well you prep or this or that. No, most patients, the vast majority of our patients, don't know those things and they don't want to know those things. These are just internal, uh, it's dental stuff. And sometimes I, I realize that as dentists, we're very good at developing clinically because we have this, uh, this desire to learn and this perfectionism uh, which... I don't know if that is a good or a bad thing. Anyway, it is a reality for many dentists. So we train and learn and improve our clinical skills and we neglect many times, and I've seen that with many colleagues, 
the personal side, the personal development, the, the mindset rather than the skill set. Because the skill set... Emotional intelligence. For me, it's emotional intelligence. I'm sure you mm-hmm. agree. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's the, the biggest part of it, being able to manage those uh, reactions, those emotions that come and overwhelm you or stress you out and uh, affect what you do, how you behave, the results you will have in your life and so on. So it's, uh, yeah, this mindset element to understand how your mind operates and how you can, uh, you know, treat it as a servant, not have it as your master, as they say. Yeah, it's a very important thing. Again, uh, I believe it's completely transferable from personal development to dentistry. Well, to every area area of your life, really. But As the number dentistry. one, and also, then you can also um, transfer it to your personal life, how you communicate with your significant other, how you communicate to your children, how you portray yourself to the world. I think it has all those benefits to improve your life. That's why I, I love personal development myself. Now, if you, if you tap back to your mindset before you went down this rabbit hole of self-development, and then the clinician that you are, now that you have done this journey that you've been on, Can you give us some, like you said, okay, being a better communicator, being a better listener, but in terms of one thing that perhaps you've changed about your communication style or maybe how you say things or maybe the pace of how you say things, is there anything that you can discuss that you can pinpoint as, you know what, this thing about my communication changed significantly and that has had a profound effect on how you are portrayed to your Mm -hmm. patients? This episode is brought to you by Enlightened Smiles. Enlightened, thanks so much for sponsoring this episode. It's a system that I've been using for some time and I continue to do so. It is something that patients perceive as high quality. Just the design of it, the way it's bottled up, the way that we present it, the feel of the trays. It is a cut above the rest. So if you want a premium whitening system for your practice that comes with a guaranteed B1 shade, look at Enlightened. So if you go to protrusive.co.uk forward slash Enlightened, it'll take some free training from that man, Payman Langrudi, to guide you through what makes Enlightened whitening unique. And if nothing else, whatever system you use, you actually become better when it comes to providing and communicating teeth whitening by going on this free webinar with Payman. Let's now join the main episode. Yeah, that's a great question. I think uh, the first thing that came to my mind when you were asking was I'm calmer in the interactions uh, with the patients and also calmer while, you know, my hands are in in the mouth. I am more uh, relaxed in a sense that I'm not thinking of what could go wrong because it there is this tendency, isn't it, sometimes we're doing a treatment and we're thinking about the next thing that could go wrong. That's really not the path you want your mind to, to go because it's going to influence your emotions, your biochemistry, your mm. physiology, everything. So that's really what came to my mind. I'm calmer. That uh, there is not that uh, internal dialogue of what things might go wrong. And also with the patients... Now that you said, I just realized that uh, and it just coming to me for the first time, I'm, I'm going to say it, that I don't speak, you know, we have this tendency, you will have to, before we decide on a treatment, we have to tell them everything that might possibly go wrong in terms of, uh, you know, in consent, informed consent and these things. I find that, you know, I don't do that in such a way. There is the written consent form that goes with the treatment plan, but I won't go through every single thing that might be wrong. And, you know, I'm just sharing that. I don't know if it's right or wrong, Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I I remove that from the conversation when I feel that it's unnecessary. It's not going to add anything to my connection with, with the other human being across me just by telling them, you know, this could go wrong and that could go wrong. Well, if it does, you know, we'll sort it out. But chances mm-hmm. are it won't. So yeah, yeah that's something that that's came a as a reflection. That's a point you made. And I think that's going to help a lot of dentists because uh, a lot of dentists, uh, some people very close to my life uh, as well, they are very much in this mindset 
of fear and what if this and what if that and and obviously defensive dentistry right it's such a huge thing now everyone's practicing defensively everyone's mm -hmm. communicating defensively and then when yeah. someone says something instead of truly listening to them you're already preparing your next answer in terms of what can I say to weasel myself out or lower the expectations further or warn of this risk or what if I forget mm -hmm. to do that you know sleepless nights in bed so 100% everyone listen up listen to Aggie be calmer in your interactions uh, and stop thinking what could go wrong and start thinking, how can I best serve my patient? I think if we come from that angle, that is the most beautiful one. The other thing you reminded me of, Aggie, is if you keep thinking what's going to go wrong, mm -hmm. it's like that skier who has to like uh, navigate through lots of different trees. And if he yeah. keeps thinking, don't hit a tree, don't hit a tree, don't hit a tree, it's not going to work. But if he focuses on the clear path ahead of him, when he focuses on the snow, he will make it. If he focuses on the mm -hmm. trees, he will hit the trees. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's a really tangible tip there is that just be calmer in your interactions. And this might not be something that's going to come in day one, but you need to practice this. Maybe go on some communication courses. I'm a big fan of, uh, for every uh, clinical course you do, you go on a non-clinical course. I'm a big fan of, of trying, and mm -hmm. that doesn't have to be dentistry. It can be just like you did. You go outside dentistry to, and just like I did for Toastmasters, for public speaking, mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. went outside dentistry. There was no, you know, spe dental speakers club. Don't have to look within dentistry. Broaden your horizons, just like you've done so, so beautifully. So tell us about a roadmap, a pathway that dentists who are listening, who are inspired by you, as well as listening to your podcast, which I would recommend in terms of gaining tips from you directly. And it's, it's nice to listen to people who are who are just so close to us in terms of, you know, you're a dentist and we can relate to that and you can relate mm -hmm. to us. So you, mm -hmm. we speak a similar language. So I would encourage everyone to, to ch check that out. But other pathways that you think would benefit to accelerate someone's progress. Maybe a dentist is a dental student is listening or maybe mm -hmm. a dentist towards the end of their career. But th that doesn't mean there's no time or space for personal development. Can you suggest a roadmap or a pathway? I will do my best as uh, complicated as it is in, in this. Uh, but I will uh, add before I do that uh, earlier on, you were saying about, uh, you know, changing, taking your attention from what you don't want to towards what you do want. And it takes practice. And I will give a very practical uh, tip there or tool you can uh, use to do that. When you catch yourself that, you know, my mind is taking me down the fear path and I'm thinking of what could go wrong, the moment you catch yourself doing that, breathe. Put your attention back to the breath. Take a couple of deep breaths and that's while you're still working, while you're still doing anything, everything else. Just breathe twice calmly when we start getting stressed or anything like that, our breath, uh, our natural breath is disrupted and bringing attention back to it can help you, you know, ground and calm. So that's a practical tool, which uh, you mentioned my podcast and thank you very much. Uh, with my podcast, I that's what I try to do always to give actionable tools, to give imp implementation. It's not about knowledge because there, there is so much knowledge out there. It's not a lack of knowledge, the problem. The problem is lack of wisdom out of that mm. uh, knowledge. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, my goal is with uh, the podcast, to give to the listener. And it's not about dentist. It is personal development that applies to most people. Yeah, it's about giving them implementable actions that one can pick up, you know, if they resonate with it, of course. Not every tool is for every situation and every person, but if they resonate, to pick it up and maybe the next morning do it. And then mm -hmm. if they like it, create a, a, a habit, a routine out of it, a behavior. And that's what I really uh, enjoy and have as my mission with the podcast. Okay, I want to ask you, have your um, nurses that you work with, have your receptionist, practice manager, principals or, or whatever that you work with, have they commented that, Aggie, you, you, you've changed, you, you, your style has become different, and perhaps the nurse is the best position uh, since you started to learn more about self and, and or implement more when it comes to self-development. Have you had a comments like that? Sometimes I had. I think I am considered, you know, the calm guy <laughs> there in, in, the, in the practice. But yes, I've had a few comments. I know that there is this someone and, you know, the nurse that will work with me will have a calm day. She won't have, you know, one of those crazy days. Even if crazy things happen, you know, they won't escalate in a, in a way that we will be running up and down. It will be dealt in, in a, a calm manner. So, yeah. 
And the nurses will appreciate that. The nurses, you know, if they if they know they're working with a dentist who doesn't catastrophize things and uh, yes. uh, it, it creates a safe environment for, you know, mistakes to happen and it's okay, let's just, with a mindset of let's just solve it rather than, oh my goodness, let's freak out kind of thing. That, you know, your nurses will love working with you. If you can be that calmer dentist, they will enjoy, they'll try and pick that shift where they get to work with you because uh, although you have a busy list and you have 60 patients, the mindset and the smile that you put on and the, the clarity in which you communicate and it, how clear it is how much you care about your patients and about each other as a team, that shines through everything, I think. That would even brighten up even the dimmest days. <laughs> Sounds great the way, I have, the way you say it. So I will go back. You asked me about the roadmap and a roadmap is... is <laughs> it sounds like it's a daunting task for me now to say, but what I would uh, start with as a foundation is a, a clarity and understanding of who we are or who you are as, as a person. So ask those questions. What is it? There are, you know, uh, lots of, this is uh, basic personal development uh, stuff. I, th- I would start with that, with the foundational stuff, like, clarity on who I am, the will of life, uh, some simple tools, goal setting, things like that, which... Any books that come to mind, please do just name them. Our producer, Auntie, do love books. So um, I'll put them in the show notes. But if you think of any books that go hand in hand with that part of the roadmap, that'd be amazing. There were three books that I I thought about uh, sharing because, you know, I can give a long list of, of books, but I think that's irrelevant and not practical. So... I thought of the three books that I would recommend to my younger self and to other dentists. One of them I mentioned already, How to Win Friends and Influence People, which really changed the way I communicate and relate with other people. The second one was uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, which uh, again I thought... (laughs) This should be mandatory reading because we simply don't learn anywhere about how to uh, manage our money mindset, how to think about money, what is money. So that book really opened my eyes, like with millions of other people. And the third book that I would recommend, which is of a different nature, but I think it is very, especially with dentist audience, is The Biology of Belief, uh, Dr. Bruce, Bruce Lipton. Have you read okay. this? This is the only one. This is the only one I haven't read yet. So that's next on my uh, Audible. I hope it's on Audible. <laughs> it must be. It must be. It, it is a very interesting book because it merges to a large extent the modern Western science and research and these things with the more spiritual or abstract uh, elements. Uh, so it's great uh, for that respect and for anyone who has this interest or is intrigued by just that concept uh, that book will give you solid evidence it's uh, really it's documented in in such a way that uh, will if not anything anything else it will inspire you to maybe some different way of thinking about things your body and particularly your body he talks about how epigenetics all this incredible stuff so these were the three books recommendations i will add the fourth one now because you I read for uh, the last few years, every single morning, it's part of my daily routine. I have a book called The Daily Stoic, and Mm -hmm. it has uh, one page a day. So it's a date, has one page where they comment on a quote by one of the Stoic philosophers of ancient Greece and Rome. It's very brief, it's one page, and it gives you an amazing practical toolkit on how to live life, really. Because the, the, mm-hmm. the human problems that we have today, whether we're dentists or whatever we are, are not very different than the problems the people had in ancient Rome and uh, ancient Greece. So it's amazing to see that there are solutions. They have been for thousands of years. So that book is called The Daily Stoic. It's one page a day. It's uh, Amazing. Incredible. I love that. And, and, and whether you do, you know, The Daily Stoic or 
uh, if you are a, a man, a woman of faith and you just connect with faith for a few minutes a day and you read something of that or anything that you can think of that inspires you, that could inspire you. That's the main thing, to wake, read something, to feel inspired by something and to learn something. If you can do that all, all in one hit, then that's, uh, I think, the, the mission of that, which is amazing. As we're coming to sort of the end of, sort of making tangible tips as much as possible, uh, what else did you have in, uh, in mind, if anything, in terms of roadmap for dentists who are wanting to become uh, better communicators or, or, or go on this journey like you have of self-development? I will uh, invite uh, people that want to go more on this journey to check out my podcast. There is a, a wealth of information there. And if you are uh, drawn to some particular element of your personal development, send me a message. I'm very happy to recommend to you more specific uh, resources. I, I can do that because in the podcast I have 270 episodes when we're recording this today. Uh, just So I have... There is uh, lots of things over there that sometimes they, they are a bit difficult to find. So I'm very happy to to share. In terms of more practical things, I will share one or two uh, more. One of them is morning routine, having a morning routine. For me, it is a cornerstone. I, I can't emphasize that enough. And when I say morning routine, you don't have to spend one hour doing a ritual after ritual, even if it is 10 minutes, 15 minutes, but it has to be consistent. It has to be empowering for yourself. And what you do during that time, it's up to you. I would suggest some kind of uh, silence or meditation, even if it's five minutes, some kind of journaling for sure. Maybe affirmations, uh, if you can squeeze in some physical exercise, even if it's like 10 minutes of yoga or something. But that's really entirely up to the person, the elements of the morning routine. Uh, again, I have. I just want to remind everyone that uh, TikTok and Instagram do not count. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the, the one thing not to do when you wake up. The worst thing that will ruin your day is pick up your Absolutely. phone and go on social media. After after one or two hours, yeah, do that. But not not before you set up the right tone for the day. Mm. You really don't want mm -hmm. to go down that way. You will ruin your day for sure. I like that <laughs> tone of the day. I, I like that very much. So set the, get on the right tone. Very good. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think you said you had another one. The, yeah. yeah, there are so many uh, other things to follow on the roadmap. There is one step at a time, and it's not a matter of giving all the tools away it's uh, and that's important for me i will say it once more that pick one out of whatever we discussed in this conversation don't try and do all of this and then roll on in toastmasters and this and that tomorrow just pick one and do it a few uh, times until it becomes a, a habit. Hundred percent, I, I agree with that. So, if there's one takeaway from this episode, is all the things that you've heard, whatever piqued your interest most, whether it's a, if it's one book title, then do that. If it's the Daily Stoic, if it's a mm. morning routine, uh, if it's a being a karma dentist and 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 just trying to apply that to your daily practice, whatever it is, pick one thing and do it really well, and then start adding to your armamentarium and growing like that. Aggie, thanks so much uh, dentist to a dentist, but, but both in the, in, the, in the space of personal development. But you've, you, what you've done is amazing. So I congratulate you and thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on to share some nuggets and wisdom and inspiring everyone. Uh, wish you all the best. I'm going to put all the links in the show notes. So do check it out. Uh, and again, uh, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's such a pleasure to be with you today. So there we have it, guys. Thank you so much for listening all the way to the end on this special episode on personal development. What are you going to do? How are you going to implement one thing? How are you going to give yourself a dose of inspiration? How are you going to become a better communicator, a better human? Just do one thing, Pratrus Rati. Just do one thing. Pick anyone and do it. There's no point just absorbing it all and not doing it. So what are you going to commit to? If you've been watching or listening on the app, you can download the premium notes as PDF and also the transcript and PDF. Usually the notes are out within 24 hours and the transcript is out within seven days as a PDF. And you can claim half an hour's worth of CPD or CE by answering the few questions below. Otherwise, I'll catch you same time, same place next week. Thank you so much.